Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. Today I'm going to show off the uh, Laser Security System Siren Module. Uh, this is the fully built module right here and uh, it also comes with a siren and a 9 volt adapter but they're not on the screen right now because there's not enough room and I want to show off all the parts. Because I'm going to show you how to assemble it, assemble it from scratch. You get two 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitors, a 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, a program microcontroller, an 8-pin dip socket, 5-volt relay, monetary push button, a 2-pin terminal block, a 2N2222 transistor, an LDR, a light-dependent resistor, that's our sensor, uh, a 100K ohm resistor, a 470 ohm resistor, a uh, diode, an LED, a red 3mm LED, uh, a switch, power on and off, uh, another uh, another 2-pin terminal block, three 10K ohm resistors, and a 7805 5-volt regulator. Now we're going to assemble this completely, including the siren and the 9-volt adapter, and then we're going to test it. Uh, it also comes with, I forgot to mention, uh, two 5-volt lasers. Now you have to power the lasers on your own that require 5 volts, so you need a 7805, perhaps a couple capacitors. That's at your end, but it will come with two 5-volt uh, two uh, lasers. And I'll talk about the lasers a little bit later, but uh, right now we're going to put in our resistors. Now they're all labeled on the board. R6 is labeled right here. It's labeled R6470R 470R ohm. Uh, R4 is labeled R410K. Uh, R3 100K, so we put our 100K ohm resistor there. R5 is 10K. R1 10K. So resistors don't have a polarity, so you can solder them either way, as long as you make sure that the right values are in the right slots. Uh, after that, we're going to do our switch, our capacitors, and our button. And uh, so, yeah, let's solder that into place, then we'll do those next components. First of all, let's do our capacitors. Our single 100 microfarad electrolytic capacitor is placed in the C1 slot right here, labeled C1100U for 100 micro. Now, on the left-hand side, you have to look very closely, but there is a plus sign, and on the right, there's nothing. Now, the electrolytic capacitor has a long lead and a short lead. The long lead is a positive, the short lead is a negative. Place the long lead into the side with a plus sign, which from this perspective is on the left, and the short lead on the right. Now, if you turn that around, if you reverse polarity there, you solder into place, as soon as you power it on, that capacitor is likely going to blow up. So be very careful. Long lead positive left hand side with a little positive symbol on the uh, footprint. Now the two ceramics, they are not polarized, it doesn't matter. Uh, they go in the C3 slot labeled C3 0.1U for 0.1 micro and the C2 slot labeled C2 0.1U. So solder those into place. Now our button is goes in the S1 slot and it really only fits in one way and should pop right in. Make sure it's flush to the board when you solder it into place. Now your switch uh, what you'll notice right here is there's a little bump on the footprint on the left hand side. On one side of the switch there's an indent and so you want to make sure that the indent on the one side is facing from a bird's eye view the indent on the footprint. So left. Now you might have, a, you want to make sure all the leads are very very straight and just gently fill with it. It might be a little bit you know, tedious to get it into place but uh, as long as you're patient, the, lead, lo, the uh, leads are uh, straight, it should really just fit in uh, directly. So uh, just be gentle with it. Next, we will do our LED, our diode, our LDR, and our transistor. Now, you have to pay close attention here because I'm not sure how well you can see the components. They're very small. <clears throat> our diode goes in the D1 slot labeled D1-1N. 4004. And on the diode, there's a white stripe on one side and black on the left, on the other side. Now, the white stripe is the um, negative. You want to make sure that on the footprint, the white stripe on the diode matches the white stripe on the footprint, which is on the lower end here. So the lower side of the footprint has a little white stripe on it. From a bird's eye view, make sure that you place the component with the white stripe facing the bottom pin. Otherwise, when you when the relay activates, it's going to cause a complete short circuit and it's going to reset the system. Be very careful. That's a protective diode. 
our LDR has no polarity and it's placed in the R2 LDR slot. Now you want to make sure that when you place it in that the top surface is level with the main board. Solder that into place. Our LED has a short lead and a long lead. The short, the short lead is the negative, long lead is the positive, similar to our electrolytic capacitor. And that goes into our LED1 slot. Now it's hard to tell from, from this perspective, but uh, so I'm, I'm going to show you, you have to pay close attention here. The side, the pin facing the LED1 footprint, the bottom pin, is your negative. Place your short lead there. And on the top, place your long lead. On the footprint, there's a flat side on the bottom. Uh, and the flat side is always the indicator of the negative. So again, short lead from this perspective on the bottom pin, long lead on the top pin. Make sure it's flush with the board. Solder it into place. No shorts, remember. The uh, 2N2222 transistor has a flat side with writing on it, and it has a curved side. You'll notice that on the footprint, there is a flat side and a curved side. You want to make sure that from a bird's eye view, when you solder into place that the flat side of the transistor with writing on it is facing the flat side of the footprint and that the curved side is facing the curved side obviously don't turn that around or your circuit will not work after you've soldered those into place what we'll do is we will do our socket our two terminal blocks and our relay I suggest doing the relay last in this step but I'm going to talk about it first it's got five pins now the relay goes right here in the K1 slot. Uh, it really only fits in one way. Make sure it's flush to the board and add a healthy amount of solder to all five pins on the bottom. The two terminal blocks uh, are placed here and here. You want to make sure that the terminal pins are facing outwards because there's a plastic side and there is a terminal side. You want to make sure that the terminals are facing outwards from the board. If you wire it in the wrong way you're gonna have a heck of a time uh, connecting your siren in this case and your uh, uh, your power so make sure that the terminals are facing out in both cases now this is a very important step the uh, socket the 8-pin dip socket goes right here in the IC2 slot See, labeled IC2 PIC 10F222 the left hand side of the uh, socket has a notch in it same with the microcontroller you might not be able to see it from here but there's a notch on the footprint there is a notch on the left hand side again you might not have you might not be able to see it from here. Make absolutely sure that from a bird's eye view, you line up the notch so that from this perspective, when the microcontroller is fitted into the socket, that the notch is facing left from this perspective. If you if you turn it around and you place it in the slot, you power it on, you'll fry your chip. So be very, very careful. Solder those into place. And then uh, lastly, we will do our 7805. Then we will wire up our 9-volt uh, adapter and our siren. might be a little bit difficult to see, but the 7805 uh, is, goes in the, the IC1 7805 slot. On the back of the footprint, it's white. Now, on the back of the 7805, it's white or gray. You want to make sure that the black side, the front side with the writing on it, goes in facing the front terminal block, like so. Don't turn that around. And if you turn that around and solder it, you're going you're gonna to be kicking yourself later because it won't be regulating 5 volts. So again, place that in, like so. Sorry for the, for the poor view, I wanted to show off the siren. This is your 9 to 12 volt siren. It'll work down to 7 volts, but it comes with an AC adapter, so you'll, you'll be getting a default of 9 volts. And it is a pulsing siren, it's extremely loud, um, and uh, it has two wires. There is a red wire, completely red, and a red and black wire. So the red wire is your positive. The wire with both red and black stripes on it is your negative. And on the siren terminal block here, the top one is labeled siren plus. The bottom one is labeled siren minus. Place your positive, your red wire, solid red, in your siren one terminal block and screw it into place. Uh, and place your red and black striped wire into your siren negative, the bottom one, siren minus uh, terminal block. Make sure that it's, uh, it's, it's tightened very well with the terminal block. The siren has on the back has a two-sided tape uh, patch that you can just rip off the uh, protective seal and stick it to your device. Or there's two mounting holes that you can mount it to your uh, project box. As well, the uh, laser 
module has four mounting holes for mounting, and I highly suggest that you do mount it. Uh, next, I'm going to show you how to wire the AC adapter. However, for the test, I'm not going to use it because uh, I've got a power supply here and not a wall or not a, a wall outlet uh, easily accessible. So I'm going to show you how to wire it for your end, but I'm going to use my power supply for our test. So stay tuned. Give me one sec. This is your 9 volt wall adapter. Uh, what you want to do is right here you want to use some wire cutters or scissors to cut off the jack. And what you want to do after that is to take, strip back a little bit of the insulation so that the two internal wires are exposed. So I'm going to do that and then I'm going to talk about the wires. As you see there is a red wire and a black wire. So what you want to do is strip off a little bit of the red and a little bit of the black. And what we're going to do is we are going to place that in our power input terminal block. Now, from here, very difficult to see, so I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to talk about it. On the left pin, uh, pin it's labeled 9 volts. On the right pin, it's labeled GND for ground. Place your red wire uh, after the insulation has been stripped off into the left pin labeled 9 volts because that's positive 9 volts and your black wire after the insulation has been stripped into your GND for ground uh, terminal. Don't reverse those because that's just going to be bad news for everybody. You have to be very careful with this kit to make sure that the orientations are correct. So instead of wiring this up uh, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two wires in here and use my power supply for test. Now we'll talk about the lasers that come with it. The two lasers, it's, you, need, you basically get one laser and a backup laser just in case anything happens, require 5 volts. I'm going to dim it down to 3 volts just to show you. You get less luminescence at 3 volts, but it'll operate at 3 volts. So that's 3 volts. That's 5 volts. So just to, right now it's on a piece of paper, so I'm just going to that dot. There we go. It's a dot laser. There is a uh, blue wire and a red wire. The blue wire is ground, so neg so DC ground. Red wire is 5 volts. So that's your end. You have to figure out how to, how to power that. Uh, what I would suggest is a 9 volt battery and a 7805 5 volt regulator that can be found at a Radio Shack or any electronics store. Um, you could also use three AAs in series, because AA batteries are 1.5 volts each. Make sure they're charged. Uh, if you place them in series, that should be 1.5 volts times three, which is 4.5 volts, which should be more than enough. Or you can use a uh, another wall transformer at your end. You, know, you can be, you, you can do it a bunch of different ways. Lasers are just coming kind of as, as an extra. So what we're going to do is we're going to shine this on our LDR. So just give me a second to set, set this up, and uh, I'll put the siren on it and I'll, I'll plug my power supply in and we'll we'll test this out. Right now I've got the switch in the off position which is facing upwards on the board. As soon as I bring the switch towards the input terminal block it will be on. Now because I don't have the board mounted uh, I don't want to jiggle it too much. I'm going to place my hand on the relay. Uh, I've actually got my laser pointed at the LDR powered by another power supply and my siren is right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it on and show you how to use it. So first power it on, turn the switch on, and then press S1 to activate. Now it's scanning. So once I breach that laser, that alarm will go off. And it is very loud. And so um, what I uh, what I need to do as soon as I breach it is to press and hold the S1 button again and let go. So I'll breach it. It's very sensitive. I moved the board. It doesn't matter. The uh, uh, once the laser goes off, it doesn't matter if the LDR is still if the laser is still touching the LDR. But in order to dis disable it, you have to press S1. Very easy operation. I'll do one more quick demo. Because right now, after I've pressed S1 again, nothing happens. I have to press S1 again, switch 1 again, to reactivate it. Now it's in scanning mode again. Very, very sensitive. You break this with a, with a, a very fine screwdriver. Very, very fast. Oh, it's very sensitive. I'm very happy with this design.
I missed it the first time there. Anyway, so I'm not sure how loud it sounds at your end, but it's very loud on my end. Really, really neat security system module. I've actually got a bunch of uh, laser kits that have a bunch of different uh, options coming out. Uh, if you're interested, check out my Mission Impossible security module. It implements uh, sound detection as well. Really, really neat. Thanks for watching, everyone.